Okay then, before I start today's Vita 3K emulator setup guide from Windows PC, if you like what you see, stay, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, Just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm always really appreciative of. So we're looking at Vita 3K emulation today for Windows PC. Now surprisingly, this isn't that difficult to set up. So what we're going to need first of all is some games. So I've got some games here and they're in the folder currently. This is going to be your structure of your games. So what we're going to do first of all is just convert these into zips. So if I right click on each one of these folders, compress the zip file. And we're going to do it with the second game got just here. So just right click, compress the zip file. Okay, while these are converting, what we're going to do is just head over to the Vita 3K website. Now, first of all, you need to know that it's not going to support everything. It's still a work in progress. So, first of all, let's just go to compatibility. And if we go to check out their compatibility list, just here, we're going to find different colors. If we go to playable, first of all, which is green, and then scroll downwards, we're going to find all of the PS Vita games, which are 100% playable. With no breaks, these are absolutely perfect to play. But if we go to the top and go to in-game, which is in yellow, we're going to see more games just here, which are also playable. They're not going to be 100% perfect, but they're going to run kind of okay it's worth checking out the compatibility list because if there's a particular game you want to emulate and it's not there then it's kind of wasting your time but anyways what we're going to do is go back to the home page and we're going to download vita 3k i'm going to be downloading windows nightless once you've downloaded the emulator itself you're going to end up with a zip folder just here. if we open this one up what i'm going to do with this is just create a new folder on desktop so right click new folder and I'm going to just call this Vita. You can pretty much call this whatever you want. Once you've done that, let's just drag and drop the contents of that zip folder inside of the Vita folder. Okay, cool. So now our games are also compressed into zip. We no longer need those folders just there because, well, we got the zip folders for these now. We can also delete that emulator zip folder. We no longer need this one. So let's actually go into the Vita folder itself. What I'm going to do for now is just drag and drop both of my zip games inside. And we're going to open up Vita3k.executable. Windows protected your PC, just go to more info and run anyway. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is select a language. Now, I'm going to go for English, United Kingdom, and just go to next. And we've got the current emulator path, which is by default in my systems folder app data. What we can actually do with this is change emulator path. If I left click on this one, I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to point this into my Vita folder, which I've just created. And here it is. So if I just left click on that one once, select folder, and we're then going to go to next. Now, the next screen we're going to see is install firmware. We got a download firmware and we also got download font package. We need both of these. We're going to start by left clicking on download firmware. And this is going to bring up the official PlayStation firmware website. So what we're going to do is go to download update. And you're likely going to see that it can't be downloaded because of security. Just left click on the horizontal lines. Keep and keep anyway. And there we go. That one's now downloaded. We're next going to go to download font package. So let's close this down. And what we're going to do first of all is install firmware file. So I need to go to my downloads directory and we're going to select the bottom one just here. So we got PSV up that dot pup double left click. OK, so that's been installed as we can see and we can actually delete the firmware installation file. So just check that one if you want. We're going to go to OK next. And as we can see, we now got a V which has been installed. We're next going to go to install firmware file again and we're going to double left click on the PSP to up that dot pup this time. And again, we can delete the firmware installation file if you wish. So just check that and then go to OK. We're going to go to Next. 
Now we've got some options here of how Vita 3K presents itself. So if you want to check info bar visible grid mode, if you don't like these settings once we're inside of Vita 3K, then you can disable them inside of the emulator itself. We're going to go to next. As we can see, you have now completed initial setup. So we're just going to press OK on this. Next up, we got Welcome to Vita 3K. You can read all of this if you like. Just go to Show Next Time and uncheck that so you don't get this pop up every time you open up the emulator. Go to Close, Create User, and I'm going to create a username which is going to be just Jamie. And just go to Confirm and OK. And here we go. So if I use my just Jamie profile just here, in fact, if we press automatic user login, just Jamie, and here we go. Left click. Okay, so here we go. This is Vita 3K. So obviously we're going to want add our games in. Now, just a minute ago before I went through the emulator process, I actually compressed my games in the zip folders. So we're going to start installing some games now. If we go up to the top just here, just go down to file. I'm going to install .zip .vpk. I'm going to select file. And then I need to point this into my Vita folder. So I'm going to go to desktop, Vita. And if we scroll downwards, I've got both of my games just here. So I'm going to select the first one here, which ends with 23. Okay, so installation complete. Let's just delete archive and press OK. And here we go. This has now appeared. So we're going to do this again, but with my other game. So again, to install, we're going to go to file, install.zip.vpk, select file, and just go into your Vita folder. And here is my next game ending 640. Double left click. Okay, and again, we can go to delete archive and press OK. So first of all, let's boot up a game and see everything is working OK. So just double left click and start. Now you'll notice in the bottom left hand side from time to time, it will say building shaders. What it's doing is just catching the graphics, that type of thing. This won't happen every time, but initially you'll find that games are going to be a little bit laggy. But like I say, generally on your second time playing the game, that lag will disappear. Okay, so I'm using an Xbox wireless controller for this, and I've not needed to set this up at all. Everything's working fine. So let's do a little bit of gameplay, and then after I'm going to go through some video settings to improve things. Okay, so let's just close out that. So like I said, it does use a system known as building shaders and it does lag as you've just seen. But generally on the second time of playing it, that lag will disappear. So let's look at video settings back down to Vita3k.exe and we're going to open up the emulator again. And by the way, from time to time, you'll get the compatibility database updated. So in other words, it's just going to remind us that more games and apps are going to be playable from this particular version you're using. So just go to OK that. This time, if we go up to configuration and settings, if we go over to the GPU tab, I always recommend using VSync. This can disable screen tear, as it says. Now, we also got screen filter here, so by default, it's on bilinear. We're going to just leave it like that. Now, the next thing, which is the best thing, is internal resolution upscaling, which is going to improve the look of our games. So, by default, this is on one time. So, if we increase this to around two times, just be mindful. If you've got a lower-end computer and you adjust these settings, internal resolution upscaling, for example, you might find a lot of lag. We've also got anastrophic filtering just here. Again, if we increase this, what this is going to do is define textures in the game. So all in all, it's going to make game look a lot better than what it did originally. Now, what I was saying just a minute ago by the initial install process for Vita 3K, if there's particular settings you didn't like the look of, then just go to your GUI tab and you can then disable or enable particular things. And then just hit on close. 
Okay, if you've got anything else to install for a particular game, such as DLC, to install this, it's literally a case of going to file and then going down to something like install package or whatever file extension your DLC is in. So anyways, with these video settings applied, let's just open up Mortal Kombat again. And as you can see, that's looking amazing now that I've applied those new video settings. Now, let me also tell you that we can also apply video settings per game. So, for example, instead of generalizing video settings for everything, if I right-click on my Mortal Kombat game, Custom Config, Create, here we go. We can now set up this game and this game only. So, because this game was running so well for me at two times, I'm going to try my luck and boost it up to 2.5 times. And also go up one with anastrophic filtering. And if I then open up the game again. Round one, fight! And that's it for today's Vita 3K emulator setup guide for Windows PC. So if you made it right to this point of the video, give the video a like. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just shame me. Also, be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.